Mr. Chairman, and thank each of you for being here today. And uh, Admiral Aquilino, it's good to be back with you. We appreciate your service so much. Uh, I'm the only member of Congress still serving who has had the opportunity, uh, sadly, to visit Pyongyang, North Korea. I saw firsthand the oppression of the people of North Korea. It's just, uh, it's beyond comprehension, uh, the uh, subjugation of the people there. And, and when you compare it to South Korea, um, which is the exact opposite, uh, a country of opportunity uh, for its citizens, and uh, the contrast per capita income is pretty clear. Uh, in North Korea, it's $967. Uh, South Korea is forty-four thousand um, dollars. You can't have a clear example in the world of the difference between socialism and capitalism. With that in mind, you've stated that North Korea is hoping to leverage their assistance, providing one fifty-five artillery shells to war criminal Putin to murder Ukrainians, uh, and they want to. Uh, North Korea wants to uh, receive nuclear and ballistic missile uh, capability. Uh, what uh, evidence do we have of this? Uh, uh, exchange of information? Uh, we certainly have uh, intelligence information that has shown the support from North Korea to Russia. I'll turn it over to General Camera uh, in a second. And that's pretty concerning. And as uh, you've stated, Congressman, all of that technology and all of the funding that Russia might be putting into North Korea continues to go to their military buildup and not their people and to feed them. So that is a concern. But let me turn it over to General Camera. Yeah, thanks, Congressman, and it was good seeing you on the peninsula uh, last month. Um, the, the evidence, I mean, we're still digging into exactly what what is being provided back, but um, KJU is, has, has an opportunity with the Russians right now to have some of his cap his technology tested on the on the battlefield, and not just um, his missile technology, but his artillery and, and others. Well, to me, it's really concerning. Obviously, it's a direct threat to the people of South Korea, to uh, uh, Japan, uh, but the ICBM capability to attack uh, and threaten American families. And so whatever you can do, we appreciate. And Dr. Ratner, I'm concerned that there are reports of the People's Liberation Army training at a former U.S. military base in Panama with the Chinese military personnel, possibly 20,000, crossing the southern border into the United States. What information do you have about the training uh, in Panama, and uh, what, are, what is the training level, and uh, is this a danger to American families? Congressman, I, I haven't seen that report. I'm, I'm not aware of a major PLA deployment uh, to Latin America, but I, I will take that back and uh, respond to you uh, in an appropriate setting. Well, it, it's so critically important, and connecting the dots is really not that difficult, and that is that if there's a training facility, if there are People's Liberation Army personnel being trained there, and then uh, persons of Chinese military age uh, unaccompanied are coming into uh, the United States due to Biden open borders, uh, every American family is at risk. And uh, this should be a, a priority uh, uh, of the Indo-Pacific uh, as to the deployment of troops from uh, the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, it's that important. Uh, Admiral Aquilino, as we see the attack of uh, war criminal Putin on uh, democracy of uh, Ukraine. Uh, we uh, are so concerned as to uh, the uh, efforts by war criminal Putin uh, and uh, also their allies of Iran and the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, what's your assessment of uh, what the dictatorial governments are gaining by supporting uh, war criminal Putin invasion of Ukraine? So, uh, Congressman Wilson, thanks. Uh, again, this kind of goes back to Chairman Rogers' question on the linkage between uh, Russia and the PRC. Uh, the PRC is certainly watching that conflict and they're gaining a lot of lessons learned on what gets done right, what gets done wrong. Um, the combination of the two supporting each other, whether it be in the information space or in the UN, is concerning. Right? You have a lineup behind the war criminal that you've identified by other nations which legitimizes the actions. And we have to ensure that we don't support that uh, assertion. Well, again, it, it's just so important. Connecting the dots again is so easy. Uh, war criminal Putin was in Beijing prior to February 22, 2022, uh, the invasion of Ukraine, uh, to, to get a green light. 
Uh, with that in mind, uh, I yield, but thank you for your service. It's more important than ever as we're in a, a worldwide uh, invasion of dictators into democracies. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I just respond to that question quickly uh, for just a, a quick, quick <coughs> intervention because there has been this <coughs> dialogue about the connection between the theaters, and I think it is really important to underscore the degree to which standing with Ukraine will help strengthen deterrence in the Indo-Pacific. It will demonstrate that there are costs and consequences for this kind of violence and that the free world will come together. And I think notably, if you look at what U.S. allies and partners in the Indo-Pacific are doing to support Ukraine, that says a lot. Uh, from the ROK to Japan to Singapore to Australia, all of these countries are providing support in one way or another to Ukraine because they believe what happens there matters strategically for them in the Indo-Pacific. Hey, it's an unintended positive consequence just like Sweden and Finland. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. We're now